All right, good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for June 29th, uh, 2022. Uh, I was answering a question from the Creativity Workshop on uh, you know details on the WMB3 pattern, which is part of the Sniper course, uh, one of the four standard patterns. Um, and uh, I, I came across this flashcard from earlier this year. This is uh, the flashcard from uh, March 14th, 2022 uh, in EWZ. Now this happens to be on the three minute, uh, I'm sorry, on the uh, one minute chart. And, uh, but the pattern is so clear uh, that I wanted to share it. And uh, this is such a good flashcard because it shows uh, some other very interesting integrated patterns related to sniper trading that I just felt like uh, this is a pretty good flashcard to print um, and to to keep handy. Uh, so I want to just spend some time on that. Um, uh, so the first thing I would note, yes, uh, Brazil on one minute. And uh, here's the here's the opening. And so. Right at the close the previous day, you got the PSR flip happening, and there's the PSR flip box. And when it opens the next day and it falls through the dragon, and you already have the PSR rolling down. And so that's a natural uh, entry on the short side with a standard risk box. Um, uh, in this case, I was using about 10 cents. Uh, and you can see how that that fails large. Uh, a couple things I want to just point out: the the particular exit strategy that this is showing is the Uwe exit. So you start with that uh, stop at the top of the dragon, or you could have easily just gone here, um, and you keep that in place until uh, price has moved in your favor to the point where the PSR comes through your entry and you get one, two, three PSR dots in your favor. And then that's what triggers your move down to here. And then you just pick up the PSR until it exits. So that's a living example of the Uwe exit strategy. Uh, you'll see that reflected over here as well. Here's your at, here's your PSR flip box. So you have a harsh winter. Reversal into the spring. There's your crossing of the baby. There's your bottoming out of the RL10, crossing the baby dragon, entering the dragon, leaving the dragon, hitting the PSR. So there's your SSC entry, which, by the way, um, you know, you could have taken as your exit on this one. You might have taken the one, two, three entry. But anyway, there's your SSC. So here's your initial stop where the PSR flips. And you keep that in place until you get one, two, three dots above your entry. And then you jump that to the fourth dot. And you leave that. Uh, you can either leave it in place until the, uh, and then take the Bollinger Band mean. I like using the, uh, the PSR. And now you get the PSR flip. There's your short. There's your exit. There's your PSR box. There's your entry. There's your exit, et cetera. Uh, so this, this one, this one flashcard illustrates the Uwe exit, the PSR flip boxes, the, um, the SSC, there's a cotta two to the upside was possible. Here's a cotta two to the downside that was possible. This is a cotta two to the upside because you have a low and a higher low. There's so many good things happening on this chart, which by the way, is one of the reasons why we like EWC as a trader uh, trading vehicle. It's uh, pretty slick that way. Now, what I want to do is zoom in just on the WMB3, uh, just so you can see the... Um, the illustration of the of the technique. <clears throat> uh, I posted some videos um, 
uh, on Patreon today and at VTI um, that go back about 15 years on the WMB3. So the WMB3 was my original articulation, uh, the operationalization, you know, the standardization of what I called the morning hook. Because I was trading things that look like on a swing trade where we have a, uh, on swing trading, we have this pattern, um, you know, the washout where you have a horrible sell-off and then you get some kind of one, two, three entry. And so we take that entry and we don't believe in it, but we're willing to play it back to wherever the sell-off occurred and usually even halfway. So the washout pattern on a weekly or on a daily chart was one of my standard swing trade patterns. And as I began to day trade, I noticed uh, that quite often you get some kind of closing action. There's the close. And then you get a gap down, harsh sell off, and then a quick recovery that gets you back to close that gap. And so started calling this little pattern here, the morning hook. And so I started teaching that and I take it with a standard morning hook. And so I said, well, what do you mean morning hook? How could we too learn to see the morning hook? So as I tried to turn that into standard practice, um, what I uh, created was the WMB3 pattern. Because at the time I was trading intraday on three minute bars. And the reason I liked three minute bars is because I like to see 30 minutes of price action, because that is what the quick frog system was using, waiting 30 minutes and then seeing what we could see. And if I'm using three minute bars, well, then 30 minutes would give me 10 bars. Hey, and 10 bars gives me the dragon and 10 bars gives me the RL10. And I like that because that's after the open, those are now being drawn by just today's price action. So if there is a big gap down, you know, closes here and then opens here. So you have that nice big gap and then you're 10 bars into this thing. Now you have the dragon and the RL 10 all being drawn by the data that you have. And maybe that's done a morning hook and is rising, but the last 20 bars of the previous day are adding to the Bollinger Bands and the River and the RL30. So you're always going to have the RL10 is down and then rolling up and the 30 is still, is still closing. So you're always going to get some kind of morning hook. So that was the reason why I was trading on the three minute bars. It was faster than the five and slower than the one. So a three seem to be the nice trade-off between the urgency of a one minute and the God awful long time to wait for a five minute. So three minutes seemed like a reasonable place to be. And 15 years ago, that's where I was. So I wanted to trade something on three minute bars. I like the Williams percent R as a, as a way to analyze um, so WMB3. So the W stands for Williams percent R. And what I want to see is oversold because that means there was a gap down and a sell-off. So what I'm looking for are things that are oversold. Well, here's one that's oversold. So when I see it's oversold, then the next thing I'm going to do is look for the beginning of that reversal and the, where I'm going to see that is in a Mac, Mac D uptick. And I use 10, 30, and 5 as my parameters. So when I see an oversold condition, check condition one is set. Then I can read up and look for the, uh, the first MACD uptick, there's one right now. So you have it, it's below the zero line because we had a harsh sell-off. And then what I'm looking for is an uptick. There's, that's higher. So that's the uptick, check. So now the MACD 
uptick has occurred. And now I'm looking for a breakout on the candle or the bar. And all I'm looking for after this close is that first uptick. So I could have taken it here or I could take it here when it hits the PSAR. But this would technically be the WMB entry. It looks like a one, two, three entry. Only in this case, I'm using one minute bars instead of three. Well, one of the things that we discovered on the WMB3 from our live trading and research weekend workshop was that while this thing works just wonderfully intraday, especially when there's a gap down and then an immediate reversal moving up and the Bollinger Bands are still very wide and you can use the WMB3 to play that standard ritual morning hook. It turned out that father and son, the Walcott family, were studying this. And what they found was that the WMB3, if you put it on the hourly and the daily and the weekly bars, that the pattern works just fine, almost like a, uh, a buy on dip and reversal. And you play to the previous sell off, whether you're looking at hourly charts, daily or weekly. So it has that fractal quality that you have what a harsh sell-off a beginning of a rehearse of a reversal and you're getting it early enough so that your risk box has two reward boxes there's one risk one two rewards where have you seen that before you've seen that in the ssc in the owl uh standard auto framing uh swing trading one day at a time the kata two all of these things are connected because of the psychology of the fractal play, which is harsh sell-off finds a measured bottom and the beginning of a, of a reversal that gives you at least two to one reward to risk. So the WMB3 is an operationalization of that particular pattern. That's why it's in the TC2000 bundle. Uh, and that's why it's one of the standard patterns in the uh, sniper trading. So what you're looking for, the first condition must be oversold, check. Once it's oversold, that's it's done its job. And then you move up to find the MACD uptick, check. Then you find the candle breakout and you apply either one of those and you get that whole trade. Oh, by the way, here's another one. Oversold, uptick, and go. So it's not just a, it's not just for the morning hook anymore. It turns out to be a nice way to play oscillation patterns. When you find things that are oversold and then they start to uptick, you get the WMB3 gets you in pretty quick. And if you've been paying attention for the last year, uh, you've been watching Wojcik do this uh, and refine this um, in his trading patterns. So it's in the bar by bar workshop um, and it's been a uh, common practice for me throughout my uh, uh, day trading and swing trading career. So I wanted to say that this flashcard turns out to be a nice way to capture a bunch of very useful uh, ideas in it. So you have, like we said, the PSAR flip boxes, you have the Uwe exits, you have Kata 2 entries, you can see the Red River, how that affects. You can see the WMB3 patterns. You can see standard risk boxes. Uh, the last one I want to show is a reminder on this one again. Notice how the RL10 comes down, barely makes a dent, and then fails again. That's what we mean by that accelerated collapsing dragon, where instead of seeing this kind of a pattern, and you have a very clear uh, bump up, which then fails. And then you get the CD here. When that pattern just barely hesitates and fails again, that is a hugely strong signal to the downside, which you can see right here that you got leg one. And now you have leg two. And guess what? The size of this leg is the size of that leg. Very, very symmetrical. So that's what I wanted to point out on that flashcard. And hopefully you find that's helpful. I've uploaded it in the file section uh, and you can see, you can download that and mark it up.
All right, today's work. All right, so we had the doji two days ago that failed to the downside. And we said there was like another critical state here. Well, all we got today was a little doji. Very small range day. So we are now once more in a critical state that could revert back to the 10 day high or down to the 10 day low. Uh, perfect critical state. After this critical state, we had a huge directional move. It's equally likely that it could go up or down. Least probable would be a continuation to the side. So that's where we are right now. Uh, the PSAR has come, the PSAR has flipped. Uh, so this actually, a flipped PSAR makes this the, uh, the risk box. So that's like the big yellow zone. And so any move to the upside could treat this as a unit of risk. And you can see one, two to the, uh, to the 30 day high and be uh, perfectly satisfied with that uh, in terms of risk and reward. Cause it's just, it's, uh, it's not even to Z2. So the upside is pretty nice. And um, the, the winter turned to spring right here. So this, even though uh, there was that big sell day yesterday, today was a failure to fail and it's pausing to reflect. And it just went into the spring. So there are reasons to believe the upside is possible. There's plenty of reasons to believe in the downside. The short-term momentum is down for one. And we're in a bare normal condition. So that makes this a perfect critical state, a compounded critical state for a move that's large in either direction. This is ideal short-term trader uh, territory you have to not have a directional bias. All right, let's take a look at the sectors. Um, you have the S&P, whoops, S&P was basically flat at minus 0.08. Uh, emerging markets, 0.4. The Russell was the worst, 1.01. That was down over 2% at one point today. Um, two and a half percent. So that was really getting murdered. Uh, tech, slight recovery today, 0.09, not much, but some. Diamonds were a little better, 0.23. So conservative US was better than tech. And then treasuries had another good day at 1.5, back to uh, almost 114. Just a handful of, of uh, sectors that were better than the market. You have Staples, lumber, Bitcoin, tech, uh, Brazil. Uh, state, this is, I'm sorry, discretionary. Staples were up 0.63, still not a huge move. Uh, food, biotech. And now uh, Microsoft and Apple are the two best performers above the market. So that gives you something like, even though tech was a little bit better than the S&P, Old school tech, Microsoft and Apple, double plus good, one and a half and 1.3 respectively. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> Downside. So there's the S&P again minus 0.08. So we had the fangs, wood, Aussie dollar, finance, real estate, art genomics, materials, Mexico, wheat and precious down to minus 1%. And now we're getting wor the ones that were worse than the worst index. That's like serious losses for me, I would say. Uh, Arc innovation, 1.57. Blended commodity. Now notice you got blended commodities, oil, energy, uh, oil exploration, and Devon Energy. So the entire energy complex, big down, which is continuing that longer term trend. So ARC Innovation 1.5, blended commodities 
Simon Property, Oil, Blockchain, and Ethereum between 2% and 2.3. Global Future of Finance continues to be Blake, 2.5. Marijuana, Energy, Lithium, 3.5. Clean Energy, 4.5. Blended Large Cap Crypto, Bucked, uh, 4.9. Uh, XOP is oil exploration 5.2. Individual targets, Devon Energy. We're going to see some great trades on that one today. That's the mover, minus 6%. When the entire energy complex is down, it doesn't surprise me when Devon is the worst. Robinhood off 4.4. Alcoa 3.3. Continuing the slide in the, in the metal. So there's Alcoa, US Steel, and Cliff, all of them. Uh, suffering. Um, so uh, Coinbase, Square, Squarespace, Rivian, U.S. Steel, Tesla, uh, Cliff 1.57, uh, PayPal 0.5. So plenty of underperformers to choose from if we see weakness uh, tomorrow. Um, and uh, some reasonable targets on the upside if we, uh, if we see continuation there. So again, uh, just where we are in the, in the market posture and getting that right is the most important thing. If I were just to simplify this with a sketch, I would just say, look, we've had the harsh sell-off. It's had a rebound and had a slight pullback terminating in a doji. So the first leg up will test the 10-day high if it goes up. If it fails, it'll come down and test the 30-day low, which is also the 10-day low. So it's perfectly postured for a large move in either direction. And if it breaks above this peak at the Bollinger Band mean, then we have clear targets to the upside for a second leg up. And if this fails below the 10-day low, look out below because that's going to be a collapsing dragon. So you have a really nice posture here. This is perfect compounded critical state. All right, let's, uh, let's hit the, uh, the report. Uh, sniper trade of the day today was in uh, U.S. Steel. So here was yesterday's closing action. Uh, broke down below the below the dragon. Uh, I let it fall a complete standard risk box of twenty five cents. Got short. Got paid quick. Uh, caught a two re-entry, got paid one, two R, standard exit, uh, SSC, half an R loss, caught a two, half an R gain. So those two kind of scratch. So this is about, so that pays for the, um, that's the cover charge. That's the commissions. So this is about plus two for the day in U.S. Steel. And with the weakness in the metals, that was the least surprising move um, there. So sniper trade of the day. Uh, Market health check we've seen. Uh, Bearish normal, still weak on the two day. The 10 day is not bad. Uh, Risk Z is warning risk off and neutral. Still in no man's land here. No signals in channeling and overreaction. Um, United Health, McDonald's, Coke, Goldman, and Proctor. So some old standby stable ones there. Tesla has been weak. Nike got murdered yesterday. Energy is very weak. Chevron, natural gas, oil exploration, Caterpillar, Alcoa, all the usual suspects for the 10-day min pain and max pain. I mean, what I look for here is, you know, the symbols that I know that I like to routinely trade, and it's my short, my shortcut to find easy targets for continuation patterns. Um, it's on a day where the market was a doji, 
it is not a surprise to see that many dojis in the Dow 30. And when there's that many dojis and the range is small and the move to the 10 day high is far, then you're going to get a lot of favorable reward to risk ratio. So that's what we're seeing there. Sorry. Oops. Come back here. Uh, <coughs> ETF 30s. Again, lots of dojis today, um, which will lead you to lots of auto framers. Energy got slaughtered today, metals and mining. There's more weakness in energy and clean energy. Brazil was solid to the upside. Um, yeah, so you can see how energy and the metals are really getting hit hard. Uh, auto framer. I, I look at the framing data here for standard framing. I look for things that are, you know, better than two to one. Uh, I'm using my risk. That's that's kind of like the uh, the daily range risk. Uh, and then this gives you the reward to risk ratio on a test of the 10 day high. So this is swing trading. Uh, one day at a time so you can frame them for one day play a turbo intraday and so forth some and we start from the top down uh i like caterpillar chevron oil oh there's a nice cluster right in there oil exploration mixed commodities s p energy and even the dow and brazil's in there too and tesla cripe that's all you need that completes the report. No, we'll keep going. Uh, daily squeezes quite a lot. And that's not a surprise when the range of the day was so small. And there you are, SPY and diamonds. Tesla is in the squeeze. That's pretty good stuff right there. Uh, radar screen for the snipers. Starting off with our favorite, the Godzilla. Here's the S&P 500 snipers. There's Nike, PayPal, 3M and NVIDIA, uh, Target, United Airlines, uh, Western Digital, Intel. Lots of goodies to choose from. Um, so these are ones where the, the weekly and the daily are getting slaughtered. And there's two kinds. There's the extreme volatility ones like uh, CCL and Nike, where it's greater than one. And then there's some where, the, where it's very quiet and they have not started to collapse yet. And so this is sorted by the five-day Z-score. So you get a nice distinction between the very volatile uh, Godzillas, which are already enraged, and then the stealthy ones that have yet, that are not yet exploding. The secondary screen on that is if you look at then the one day Z score, CCL had a two Sigma move today. Uh, 3M is extraordinarily quiet at minus one, uh, as is BXP. Uh, Intel extremely quiet. That feels pretty good. I bet you that's that's a nice setup right there. In the tactical symbol set, um, PayPal, but U.S. Steel. So I'm staying with that one. Cliff. Um, otherwise, all of your 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 uh, cryptos. Um, I like the U.S. Steel. I'm using much too wide a risk box for that one, I'm noticing. 
Uh, same with Cliff. I'm going to reduce my wrist box so I can get a bigger position size. In the fireworks, only GIS. So again, uh, extraordinary outperformance, large volatility on the five day and one day. This is something that has exploded. Like, holy cow, Batman, boom, pow. And there could be another leg up. So GIS needs to be looked at. Let's look at one of those right now. Just for the heck of it. Well, there it is right at the top. How about that? Yeah, pretty much. There he is at the top of his, uh, up in here. He's at the very top of, of his 150, 30, and 10-day ranges. Had a huge one-day move, and that has stretched the five-day move. Uh, more to the upside would be the least surprising result of all. Uh, so that one looks like it could be pretty cool. General Mills. Yeah. Put that on your short list. And his uh, R10 is 25 cents. Yes, indeed. That's a third of a percent. I'm liking it. Um, the S&P 500 fence sitters, these are the ones that where the weekly and the daily are right smack in the middle of their trading range in a really tight compression in here. So that means that they, are, they could go to the top of the trading range or the bottom of the trading range and get a three to one uh, reward to risk ratio, just on a test of the extremes of the trading ranges. And some of them have already exploded like AEE and ETR on the basis of the five day. And these other ones are extremely quiet volatility. So if you ever wanted to see one that was the opposite of volatile, it's quiet. Yeah. Too quiet. This thing has had an extraordinarily quiet five day and a one day, and yet is right in the middle of his trading range. Let's go look at SNPS, just so we can see what that actually looks like. Synopsis, never heard of them. That's about a sideways, quiet channel, ready for sharp breakout in a little doji as you could want. Uh, so if you look at that in that sense, let's see if this will let me draw. Yes. So everything has compressed on the five day and the one day is compressed. So if we just set that as the zero state and ready to break out, you get a move to the 10 day high. And if that works 30 day high, and you get the top of the dragon and the top of the RL 10 to reach for on a very small range risk. And then if that breaks down, that means it's going through the bottom of the dragon, then the belly of the dragon, then the 10 day low in the PSAR. So this thing is postured for a breakout in either direction. The, the absence of volatility is what really makes this stand out. And the fact that while we're in a bear normal market, that doesn't look like a bear market at all. That just looks like somebody that is just precisely content to be exactly where it is. And so the first thing that is going to happen on this someday is this is going to break out to the 30-day high, or it's going to break down to the 30-day low. And your risk, your, uh, your risk is small, and your rewards is three to one and probably four to one. That's what makes this a fence sitter. It's the absence of volatility, the absence 
of critical state that is so darn exceptional. Uh, I don't think you're going to see that in anybody else's trade patterns. Yeah, if this thing continues to pinch, this could even be a super pinch and be even smaller. So that's an interesting one. Uh, note to self, check that out tomorrow. So I wanted you to see uh, uh, what a fence sitter uh, looks like. Uh, continuing on, our most quiets in the S&P 500 on the basis of the five day Z score and the most volatile on that same basis. There's win. That's the um, Las Vegas guys. The manic depressives. A two Sigma five day Z score. There's general mills. DLR looks pretty interesting. I, I mean, you can make a case for any of these. The, the extreme volatility on both the one day and the five day uh, makes that one potentially, you know, just beginning its breakout. And look, it's all, it's in the bottom of its weekly and the bottom quarter on the daily and is still relatively low. I just, I hate to cherry pick, but man, DLR. This is sometimes where you find things when you, when you surprise yourself. Yeah, that's pretty cool. A super large five day and one day. So big gap down, harsh sell off. That thing's ready to collapse. If it gets below 125, look out below. Ooh, that would be like the, you know, a three-year low breakdown. Very interesting. Yeah, I think I'd be like, I think I'd like that one. In fact, if I put a little range box right around, or wrist box right around here, I could play that as a one, two, three, just to the 10-day low, and then add a second position if it fails below 124, that'll be a stealthy trade that'll uh, catch some people by surprise. So that's what you get when you find when you go hunting, uh, hunt a volatility hunter. in the same way that SNPS was the quietude hunter. Completely different kind of a pattern, completely different ends of the psychology spectrum, which makes, in my view, the way this thing is arrayed is that top little region, you're always going to find interesting, anomalous, pretty cool, wow type patterns in here. The, among the most quiet and the most volatile in the, if you do a histogram of volatility, what we're really caring about is the fat tails of very quiet and the fat tails of very volatile. That's where the interesting trades are for short-term traders, such as ourselves. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's your standard TC2000 stats for our tactical trading set. Um, the sniper stats for the tactical trading set sorted by the five day volatility from most to least. Uh, and then the four seasons, we're starting to see spring come back in a little bit. Um, lots of big breakdowns over the two-day uh, NDX today. 
Treasuries had the big breakout uh, on the two-day. And then Procter, Coke, Goldman, and McDonald's, kind of a, those are consumer staples right there for you. All right, that's everything we want to look at on the daily. Uh, let's do some sniper trade reviews. Uh, lots of grinding again today. Not unusual. Uh, this is U.S. Steel. I think, did we already? Yeah, that was the sniper trade of the day. Uh, small win. Standard risk. 2R win. Quick loss, quick gain to, to zero out. So about 2R on that one. That's the one we saw from earlier today. Um, this is peak. This is at uh, Healthcare Real Estate. P E A K, P E A K, I should say. So that was yesterday's sell off standard risk. I'm using about 20 cents. It, it crosses the dragon to the upside and hits the PSAR. So I'm long with standard work, quick, uh, quick loss. Uh, SSC second entry, quick scratch. Try it again. This is a cot of two. Micro win. So we're at about zero. And it just wasn't. That one may now be done. That one may be done. It's been petering out. Uh, ARE is the other uh, former Godzilla healthcare real estate that we've been trading for about three weeks. Uh, big gap down. So this would be one of those morning hook opportunities. Hits the PSAR, standard risk to the bottom of the dragon of about 50 cents. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Hits the PSAR for about an R. That was heavy. That was hard work right there. Uh, next up, Devon Energy. Energy's been very weak. I'm using about uh, 60 cent risk. Uh, gap up, sold off through the dragon. A risk box off the top, short. Second position on a collapsing dragon. Third position, collapsing dragon. Because why not? Standard exit at the PSAR, big win. I think that one made the day. Uh, Microsoft, that was the open. Uh, breakout to the upside, risk box off the bottom uh, of about a dollar. There's a gift, may have given back too much, about one hour give back. So net two. Cotta two reentry, quick loss. Cotta two reentry, scratch. Um, uh, PSAR box rollover, short, standard risk box, about one R. So maybe three altogether on that one. SCO is the triple inverse uh, energy. When energy continued to be weak. Uh, Mark asks, do I play reverse hooks? Um, like an owl, I will, or if it's a collapsing dragon. Um, and the collapsing dragon is normally the easiest playable. So Devon Energy was like that exactly. Uh, that that was exactly the play. I just like to see across the dragon and collapsing, and then it's a no-brainer. When I see things break a support level, I'm almost instantly ready to be short. Uh, as long as I can get a risk box on it, uh, yeah, a gap up and then fail is a absolutely a play. It's basically a collapsing dragon. 
my favorite play. So SCO is a triple inverse energy. Um, energy got really crushed. Uh, so now that means this, this means energy really failing uh, when you see this going up because it's the triple inverse. There's a uh, MMRB off the low, cross the dragon, hit the PSAR, so I'm long using the uh, dragon and the PSAR as the exit, standard exit for about 2R, quick hit in uh, energy. This is Alcoa, metals have been very weak. Uh, you asked me about kind of the morning fail. That's kind of what this is. Uh, it was a big gap up, fail. Let me, uh, let me zoom in so you can see that a little easier. Yeah, so uh, this is the close, this was the close, and then this is the open. So gap up opening from here, and then instantly failed down through the PSAR, hit the dragon, through the dragon and left. Uh, I hung a wrist box from, this is the standard wrist box from the top of the dragon. So I just automatically get short. That's kind of like a failed hook, uh, Mark. That's that's how I think of that. That one's so, that one's so straightforward to me that um, that's my, my favorite play. And this one, even in the first bar, I wouldn't be offended in that first. If you got short here, so I'd fail all the way to here and start to reverse, you said, I'm happy. I'll just play that and get paid in one bar. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I got short here. Continuing to fail. PSR exit for about 3R. Miss the SSC uh, in Alcoa. Final Tesla. This one was hard today. So uh, I missed the uh, the gap down and fail. I should have uh, I should have been on this one like right about here. Uh, I let the bar close and then fail, then got short with uh, one standard risk box, which is like six bucks. So when this failed, I just hung that box on it, six dollars and short. By this time. You should have your risk out of it. Quick hit. Um, I tried the uh, SSC, quick fail. Should have been short, D got short a little too late, I feel. Um, it started to reverse. So quick scratch, tried the, um, uh, like a Kata two, quick loss, reverse short, micro gain, short again when it cro recrossed the dragon, quick scratch, tried the long, quick scratch. So, it, you know, uh, Tesla just did not have big moves for me today in the early stages, whereas energy was really moving. So this was about one half that loss half. So those two scratch, here's a scratch. Uh, these two probably cancel out. And then those two scratch. So Tesla was a nothing for me today. Which puts them in a critical state around uh, what six, probably six fifty to six seventy. Anytime Tesla's below seven hundred, it is a um, interesting play. Uh, so that was the last of the sniper trades. Uh, lots of grinding today. 
uh, net positive, pretty strong, um, but there was a lot of trading. Oh, uh, just a second. The fifth trade. Yeah, that was a, uh, that one was a, yeah. So in Tesla. Yeah, so this is about, that's about a 0.5. This one's about a minus 0.5. So those two scratch. These two scratch. This one gives me about maybe one. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I lost a half on this one. That maybe is a gain of one. And there was probably some slippage in here. So, yeah, I'm short on. Yeah, this one is short. Because this thing went up failed made a lower high and is coming through the dragon that's instantly short with the standard risk box right there and then covered for a slight win and then this one failed at the pcr couldn't get through so it crosses the dragon so i get short there didn't follow through started to get flat so just scratch this one now put in this is like a double bottom here PSAR flip box, wanted it long. It didn't work. Scratch. So a bunch of nothing today in Tesla. Uh, last, we'll get to the traders. All right, so this is from Bob, our pro trader out in Colorado Springs, my mentor and chairman of, you know, on, on my board of directors. He's the uh, senior member of my board of directors. Uh, here's the PSAR flip box, full of win. Here's the next PSR flip box where this just started to turn positive. This is a higher low. So that gives you like a cot of two. Now notice these are daily bars. So, uh, I mean, those are days. So these are two hour charts. So in a regular day of 7.5 hours, uh, there's about four two hour bars per daily bar. So this is a little faster than daily charts, but much slower than one hour, 30 minute or 10 minutes. So this is either a very, very slow daily or very, very slow uh, day trading or fast swing trading. So his, his little uh, setup, he does a modification. He uses a MACD 430 instead of the 1030. He likes the earlier warning and it makes the it makes it stand out a little faster. So here was the turning point underneath and starting to hook up, which led to this. And the next time that that happens after the summer, fall, winter and hook up just getting ready to start. And the fact that this is a higher low. On the CBOE three month volatility, that's a rise in volatility getting ready to happen. So he's getting ready for that system shock. Anytime Bob R posts a chart, you should pay close attention. Just saying. Uh, Griff doing some great work. I still got to review. He, uh, and Griff and uh, Phil Wu from the interns uh, have put together an owl trading package course 
in Rizuku um, that is fully implemented in um, uh, Thinkorswim for those using Ameritrade. Uh, I am going to go through the videos and the lessons, but knowing their meticulousness, I'm fully confident it's going to be amazing. We haven't put a price on it yet, but uh, uh, we will probably release that in about a week for uh, owl trading. And I believe they're looking at uh, swing trades on that one. All right. So here's Griff on EWZ on the one minutes. And this is all three patterns integrated for 2R. Uh, there's your SSC, there's your COTA 2, there's a CD, another CD, another CD, SSC. You can see the work right there. That's a template for quality craftsmanship. Study his work. That may make you interested in the course they put together. If you've been following their work on the Cornell note sheets and watching their work, for the last year, you, you know that that's going to be incredibly effective. Um, this breaks out the SSCs only. Um, here's Tim on had tough day here in the uh, overnight market on the e mini. So let's see where we're at. Yeah, hardly any volatility. So you're going to this is the the absence of volatility today probably the quietest day that we've seen in two months uh so there's going to be a lot of false starts so there just wasn't much room in here he made a he got a quick scratch uh i was tempted here probably would have scratched um this is a good short maybe we could have gotten out here instead of here um it failed again through the vwap Maybe we can get out here, but that's you're going to take that loss. Um, the short I thought was slow. It should have been here. And if you're going to get out here, you have to re-enter there. We should get paid on that one. This would have got me in and a uh, and fail. This would have got me short right here instead of here. That one should have paid us well. Um, this one should have been at least a scratch, good scratch. This is where I should be long. If that gets you out, that must get you back in when you cross the VWAP and then you get paid nicely on that. This is a good short. This is a good effort on the short side, quick stop and reverse. Um, we should have got more out of this on the re-entry here. So uh, maybe with best play, we might've been flat for the day. When, when you have the smallest volatile range of the quarter that's just the kind of day you're going to have um let's see uh luke for three and a half let's see oh. mostly grinding early and but you keep firing to get paid he made all of his money here they all look the same leaving the station Quick scratch, micro gain, quick scratch. We should have gotten paid better here. Um, the short was slow. We should have been short here instead of here. Great exit. Pretty good entry. We should be getting paid right here instead of here. We gave all of that back. Darn it. Uh, the short was slow. We should have been short here. And then on that gift, you know, this should have been about plus seven. As I'm reading that, uh, this one should have gotten paid better than a scratch. Uh, but keeping the faith, this is another one of those where that RL10, see how that when price got sideways, but the RL10 keep failing, that's a place for a second possible, possible second entry. Uh, did, he did some more work getting back to his old reliable CLF. Is this on the two minute? Yep, two minutes. Right there in great big numbers. Here's the shelf. Man, you haven't traded this one for a while, but you still got the touch. Bam. Nice. Like a long lost friend. Yeah, uh, I had trouble with this one too. 
Um, Jack pretty much grinding. So he, he got the short, maybe gave back too much on this one. And here's where I, when you get a big win, you know, you get one, two, three pushes and you're outside of the Z3. It closed here opened here, sold off, could not make a new low and starts to reverse back up. Maybe you can just take that and be happy. Otherwise, that's uh, like a one, two, three. That's still pretty good. Um, this short here, maybe here, and then maybe scratch. Uh, I like this short. Uh, we should be getting out probably here or here when it hits the PSAR. Pretty good re-entry on the short. We might've made a little more than given back half. Uh, that's a good shot. And then of course you were out by the time it finally made its move, but that was a tough, a tough play in Tesla. Uh, but he murdered uh, Devin for 10. Absolutely perfect. Big gap up, sold off through the dragon, gets the PSR flip short when it crosses the Bollinger Band mean. Notice how, again, price goes sideways and the RL10 barely budges. When that shelf breaks, we might've had a second one here. Now he did get it on the break of this shelf. Now notice once again, how the RL10, even though we're getting yeah the sideways here the rl10 doesn't bounce it just gets flat and then once it resumes he crushes that and maybe the same thing could have here, been here for a third which is where i think i got my third position on devon but that's really good work obviously for 10 or Uh, Nike, that's a morning hook for you. Oversold, uptick, WMB3, add, 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 and failure to continue is reason to get out. Tries a quick short, doesn't manifest, gets a little taste. This is really quick, getting the second position in, but because he scratched it, I don't mind that, and he did make bank, so total 8.7. Oh yeah, he, he got this short and a failed long. So that's 8.7 in Nike, which we framed out yesterday. Yeah, I think uh, Bill wanted to say something about um, uh, Jeff and Sonal's work today. So go ahead, we'll, we'll add this to the recording. Just wanted to... Uh... Give those guys a huge shout out. Um, Ken and I both know how hard that is just to to do your <clears throat> your live trading in front of people. Um, I, I really appreciate everybody that went out there and supported them today, and uh, just it, it was it was really good. I, I mean, Jeff is is a, a tactician par excellence, and uh, a lot of the stuff was over my head, but he was, he was uh, really helping out some of the other professional, other professional traders and answering perfect questions. Uh, it was nice to see too, that um, the systems and the, and the way that we go about things uh, mirror some of the things that he was doing through it's through a different lens, of course, but um, to see him, we were, we were basically trading the same uh, stock at one point in USO right after the announcement there. Uh, so his approach uh, and dealing more with the, I'm kind of anti-news. I don't listen to anything. I'm just a volatility trader. Uh, and then for him to start to translate all the talking heads and everything into the trading gave me a new insight on what actually goes through the, the mind of every other kind of trader that's out there. So the guys, uh, he and Sanal, are just uh, uh, really, really good people and really good traders. So anytime that they're that they're doing that, I cannot recommend uh, them higher than just just do it. Make the time, 
make the time to see them in action. Yeah, I That's... go back with uh, Jeff and Sunal for about 15 years. Uh, yeah. They they came to the um, uh, live trading yep. shops and the research weekends for about 10 years in a row. So we've got a bunch of their early uh, systems early analysis. And uh, boy, they are just as thorough as can be. Holy very, moly. very professional. So um, plus one to them. Yeah, it was it was nice to see the two sides of the, yep. you know, I, whereas I'm completely intuitive and visual They're, you know, okay, well, we're going to break this down and we are going to schedule time. They even schedule time, no matter what's happening in the in the market to, you know, actively plan time to zero state, no matter what's going on. Nope, we're going to stop trading and we're going to go take a nap. Like they schedule a nap every day that's that's the level yeah, so, of preparation uh, jeff's got a um he's got a great interview with uh john bollinger of who invented the bollinger band trades uh bollinger band trading systems and indicator and jeff is a uh, uh a fellow a research fellow on the london-based society for technical analysis um you know one of the the, the strongest um uh, professional trading credentialing organizations in the world uh, he's on the board and uh i just have so much respect for him so absolute, uh, absolutely he's done a lot of good work on trading view putting together uh a tortoise style lens um there as well so uh that's everything we got for tonight we'll go ahead and uh, get this produced and um uh, if i can get if jeff copied or if he uh, taped it or recorded it yeah, I'll send him an email. Uh, we'll, I know he we'll, did. We'll try to get it uh, posted if he's. They're they're back. trying to break it down into because there was because today Chunks. was a grinder. Um, yeah. They're breaking it down into the into usable pieces. bits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, guys. That's everything we got for today. Take good care. We'll see you tomorrow.